presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week we heard how Jungle Jim Bradley and Shanghai Lil were rewarded with $250,000 by the British government for their capture of Prince Bhutan and the return of more than a million dollars worth of smuggled emeralds. A short time later, while Lil was waiting for Jungle Jim, she was visited by a sinister figure who called himself the Silent One and who warned that she and Jim faced death if they meddled in affairs that did not concern them. For the moment, both Jim and Lil were puzzled by the mysterious message. But later they discovered there was a direct connection between the warning and the urgent message they had received from the American banker, O.P. Watts. They visited Watts and received another warning when a dagger was thrown through the window, embedding itself in the wall. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full color, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. Jungle Jim, Shanghai Lil, and O.P. Watts are examining the note which they found attached to the dagger that was thrown through the open window. Well, there's one thing certain, Lil. Your friend, the silent one, isn't fooling. Oh, good heavens, what do we do? What does this all mean? Well, unless I'm mistaken, it means that your daughter and her husband are in a tight spot, O.P. A tight spot? Oh, I knew something like this would happen. I foresaw it quite. Lil, I just noticed something. The ink on this note looks to be the same color as the faded address on the envelope of the letter addressed to Watts. And it's the same as the writing on the note that Silent One wrote in my room. Compare them, Jim. You've got that note in your pocket. Wait. Here it is. Jim, look. The writing's gone. It's faded out. That paper is as blank as it was when he tore it from my pad. Ha-ha! Never mind the ha-haing, O.P. Let's see that letter you've been talking about. Of course, of course. Yes, it's uh, right here on the table. Look, Lil. The address on this envelope is faded, too. Uh, well... I believe you're right. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Just as I thought. This page is a complete blank. We can't even compare the handwriting. Well, this is amazing. Quite. Why, I read the letter only last night. Who was it signed by, O.P.? Why, why, the man you mentioned, of course. The, uh, the silent one. And the silent one uses disappearing ink. Well, we can't get anything from these letters. Within an hour, even the word death will have disappeared from the paper that was attached to the dagger. Good heavens, what a country. Even handwriting disappears. Oh, we must do something, Bradley. You and Mr. Bell have got to help me. Money is no object. None at all. Well, all right, let's hear your story. Yes, and start at the beginning. We don't know what this is all about yet. Uh, yes, the beginning, yes, the beginning. Well, that was on a boat. That young upstart Bob McGuire was aboard. My daughter Connie had known him in America. And you were all headed for India. Yes, yes, that's it. I see it now. My daughter got me to take her abroad. Insisted on coming. Oh, she's headstrong. It was all a game. So that she could be with this young upstart McGuire. Yeah, I, I see through it now. And uh, why was McGuire coming to India? I believe you said he was a young mining engineer. Yeah, that's right, that's right. A penniless mining engineer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why he was coming myself till I heard him talking to Connie. Go on. Why was he coming? Foolish reason. Idiotic, if you ask me. It seems his father had died and left him, oh, some fool map. It was supposed to show the location of a cache of jewels hidden by some fellow by the name of Genghis Khan. Did you say Genghis Khan? Yeah, that's it. Quite. Jim! I begin to see a connection between O.P. and the silent one now. So do I, Lil. Go on, O.P. What happened? Why, nothing. That is, we came here, and this McGuire began to make preparations to go into some place called Buerna, near the Khyber Pass, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's it, quite. And your daughter wanted to go with him? Yes, amazing. You're right. Yep, and I overheard them planning. Of course, I forbade it. I told Connie that she was make her decision. She must choose between that fortune hunter and me told her to either send him away or live on his bread and water. And being a smart girl, she went with the man she loved. I don't blame her. I think she was wise. Miss, what do you mean by... Uh, uh, oh, never mind. You haven't finished yet, O.P. Now, what about this letter that has faded out? You called us when you received it, didn't you? Yes, quite. I was about to let Connie go on her own way. And then this letter came. Oh, I tell you, it froze my blood. Can you remember what was in it? Oh, quite. I'll never forget it. It said, uh, we understand that Mr. Bob McGuire is about to search for the missing jewels of the Genghis Khan. Yeah, that was it. And that I should stop him. Otherwise, both he and his wife, my daughter, of course, would be killed. Mm -hmm. It begins to add up, Lil. Now I know why the silent one came to you after you tried to see O.P. Watts. So do I, Jim. 
Is that all there was in the letter, O.P.? Oh, yes, quite, quite. Except that it said that I would be killed if I went to the authorities. And so you didn't go to them. You came to us. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Now, of course, you'll help me. Well, that remains to be seen. I'm going to do some looking around first. Uh, I'm interested, but if I do anything, I'll have to do it alone. I'd love to have Mr. Real with me, but uh, right now she's sold on civilization. Oh, is that so? <laughs> well, darling, you just try to get rid of me. We've got all the information we can get here. Come on. <laughs> An hour or two later, Jim joins Lil in her sitting room. Come in. I've got some information, Lil. Oh, bye. Go ahead. What have you found out? Well, Bob McGuire and his wife, old O.P.'s daughter, are staying at India House, a small hotel about a mile from here. Did you see them? No, they were both out. And I came back for you. That is, if you still think you want to look into this thing. You don't think I'm going to let you have all the fun yourself, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I've already made up my mind, and I've made all the arrangements necessary. What do you mean, Lil? I went to see Colonel Scott. He's arranged a six-month leave of absence from the Chinese Secret Service for me. And during that time, he's going to attempt to have me transferred into the British Intelligence Department. Well, what for? Leaving the Chinese service is all right, but why tie yourself up? Because Scott says that the British Department won't need me for some time. But they've made me a very interesting offer to hold myself at their orders in the future. Right now, I'm a free agent. Oh, I see. And you, uh, you want to look into this O.P. Watts affair? I intend to look into it. What's our next move? Well, we're going down and talk to Bob McGuire and his wife. If possible, I'm going to have a look at that map uh, old O.P. says young McGuire has. I get it. You're going to point out the danger and attempt to talk him out of the expedition. Mm -mm. You're wrong, Lil. If it looks the least bit promising, we're going with them. Now you're talking. Well, I wonder who that can be. Lil, I'm wrapping it back to that door. I'll open it. We're not taking any chances until we find out what this is all about. I don't like this silent one. Flowers for Mme. de Vriel. Oh, I'll take them, Jim. They don't look very dangerous. <laughs> Thanks, boy. Well, it looks as if you've been working fast in Calcutta, Lil. <laughs> Who's your admirer? Wouldn't you like to know, Jim? <laughs> Say, this basket's heavy. Oh, there's no card on it. What? Oh, there's more than flowers in there, too, Lil. Why, uh, what's that in the middle? Jim, come here. Look at this. It's a mahogany box inlaid with pearl. Oh, Jim, this box is beautiful. Boy. Well, it must come from Colonel Scott. Well, open it up. There's a little handle there on the front. <coughs> Get back, oh! Lil! Jim, get that thing! It's a hooded cobra! Get behind me, Lil! Get behind me! Oh, if only I if only I could reach that dagger! Look out, Jim! Jim! Uh, I, I've got the dagger, Lil! Look out now! I'm going to throw it! Oh! oh. There! Oh, you, you got him right through the head! Oh, Jim, the terrible thing! Keep back! Keep back for a minute, Lil! I want to make sure he's dead! Yeah. He's dead, Jim! Oh, get it out of sight! Yeah, that's, that's just what I'm going to do! Open that window behind you! There he goes into the alley. Oh. Oh. Jim, I can't stand a snake. Oh, boy, the, the hood of death isn't too pleasant. Well, you you seem to have made some nice friends here in Calcutta, Lil. <laughs> that came from the silent one, Jim. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And it means that we've got to move fast. Why? What do you mean? That map Bob McGuire has must be authentic. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so much attention paid to his expedition. And as long as he has that map in his possession, his life isn't worth a plugged nickel. Mm, that's it exactly, Lil. Come on. We're going over and find him right now. Oh, Jim, I just happened to think. What? Perhaps we're too late. You were at the hotel an hour ago and they weren't in. Mm, I know, Lil. Come on. Down these stairs. There's only one flight to the street. Well, if Bob McGuire and his wife received a present like the one I just got, there might be a reason why they didn't answer their bell. Oh, well, just keep hoping that we're in time. There's usually a taxi right outside the door here. Oh, there's one, Jim. Right. Driver, take us to India House just as fast as you can. Yes, I am. Oh, can't we go any faster than this? Step on it, driver. Yes, 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 side. We've simply got to be in time, Jim. I've never seen either Bob McGuire or his wife, but whoever they are, they deserve a better break than they're getting. Mm, you're right about that, Lil. India House isn't very far now. Come on, driver. Step on it, will you? Uh, Jim, how about O.P.? We should have warned him before we left. Well, it's too late to warn him now. He'll have to take care of himself. Oh, there's the hotel. Right here, driver. Yes, I am. Well, here's your money. Oh, Jim. What's the matter, Lil? That native coming out. It's the 
silent one. He's running for the corner. Let him go, Lil. We'll take care of him later. If he's been here, we've got to get to young McGuire. What room are they in, Jim? I don't know, Lil. We'll have to find out. Oh, here's the desk. Clerk, uh, what room is uh, Bob McGuire in? If I will wait. Oh, we haven't got time to wait. What's the room number? But, ma'am, sir, if you will but wait. This is a matter of life and death, I tell you. What's that room number? You're looking for me. I'm Bob McGuire. McGuire, quick, answer me one question. Where's your wife, Connie? That's my business. Say, who are you, anyway? If you've been sent here by her father... We haven't. Your wife is in grave danger, McGuire. That's right. I'm Jungle Jim Bradley, and this is Miss Lily DeVrio. We know that you're planning to go into Burna to look for the jewels of the Genghis Khan, and that there are powerful forces determined to stop your expedition. How did you get all this information? Never mind how we found out about it, McGuire. We can tell you that later. Your wife is in danger. Listen to me. Because we know what you're planning, an attempt has just been made on our lives. Mr. Real was sent a basket of flowers that contained a hooded cobra. And the man that sent them came out of this hotel just as we arrived. You mean that someone may have sent a gift like that to Connie? Oh, we don't know, but... Jim! Why, the hotel's on fire! Oh, but... Look at those stairs! It is! Look the flames! Look, they're right in my room! Oh, Connie's in there! Lil, you wait outside. Oh, We've got to save them. Come on, Come on. Which door is the McGuire? The fire is getting fast. Hey, you're right. This hotel is a regular fire trap. Here, here's the room right here. Is the door locked? Have you got your key? No, the door's not locked. All right, open it. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Connie. Connie, where are you? McGuire. McGuire, get back. We'll break the door down. Will Jungle Jim and McGuire be able to rescue Connie and escape from the burning hotel? The adventures you have just heard dramatized will appear in full-color action pictures in next Sunday's Comic Weekly. The big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure, you will find all the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's Skippy, the antics of the Katzenyama kids, Jiggs and Maggie in Bringing Up Father, the page entitled Gags and Gals, Barney Google, Toots and Casper, the Little King, and Flash Gordon. See all these famous characters in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly. And don't forget our date next week. Same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.